Hi, fourth graders. My name is Ms. Holman, and I am so excited to be back with you guys again today to cover the topic of plot. We are going to cover the plot of a story. Let's begin by going over a review of what we've learned throughout this past week. So the last couple days, we learned about characters and setting. Characters are the people, animals, or creatures that are in stories, plays, and other texts. Major characters are important to the main plot and story conflicts. Minor characters support the major characters but have less of an influence on the story. So the major characters are the characters we're reading about throughout the story that have many conflicts that might um, have a large influence on the story throughout. And then, our and then our minor characters are characters that we don't see as much, but they're still there and they help support the major characters throughout the story. The setting, which we learned about yesterday, is when and where the story takes place. So when we're trying to find the setting, we have to remember to ask ourselves, when is the story taking place? Where is the story taking place? When we're looking for the setting, we're thinking of the place, the time of day, the time period, the social environment, and even the season. Now we're gonna take a look at the influence setting and characters have on the plot. So setting contributes to the plot by allowing the reader to understand the impact that time and place may have on the events that occur throughout the story. And the setting helps to set a mood for the plot. And then characters, the characters add tension and conflict to the story. Characters add depth to a story. Without a setting and characters, a story would have no plot. If our story didn't have a setting, it wouldn't have a plot because we, we wouldn't know where the story was occurring. It wouldn't help set a mood for the story. We would have no idea what was going on in the story if we didn't have a setting and if we didn't have characters. The characters add more depth to the story. They the characters have conflict, the characters add a storyline, and that helps create the plot. Okay, so now we're going to begin on today's topic, which is plot. Our objective is I can identify the plot of a story and a video story through the use of a plot diagram and a story map card. So I want you guys to take a minute to read that objective to yourself, read that out loud, read it to an adult that's with you. Just take a moment to do that, please. Okay, now after a quick review that we just had over setting and characters, and after reading the objective, I think we're ready to begin. So we're going to start off with the read aloud. We're going to read the short story, The Princess and the Pizza. And I wrote down, I included some information that you guys should remember to do while, the, while we're completing the read aloud. Feel free to pause the video throughout to have more time to read or to look at the pictures. So if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video, read the story to yourself, catch up, take a minute to look at the photos, and look up any words that you are unfamiliar with or are confusing to you. So if I say, if I read a word through in the story and you don't know exactly what that word means, go ahead and pause the video and take some time to look up that word and figure out what it means. You can do that with the help of an adult or you can do that on your own. Just remember, it's important to know what we are reading about. So if we don't understand a word, then we need to take some time to look up that word, right? All right, let's begin. The Princess and the Pizza by Mary Jane and Herm Ouch. Princess Paulina needed a job. 
Her father had given up his throne to become a wood carver and moved them to a humble shack in a neighboring kingdom. Since the king was still learning, his carvings didn't sell, and Paulina's garden barely kept enough on the table. Paulina missed princessing. She missed walking the peacock in the royal garden, surveying the kingdom from the castle tower, and doing the princess wave in royal processions. Paulina tried walking a stray chicken around her shack, but it only pecked at her bare toes. Surveying the kingdom from the shack's leaky roof made even more holes. She tried princess waving to the townspeople from her father's cart, but nobody bothered to wave back. They just thought she was swatting at flies. One day, a page rode past the, sh past the shack, announcing that Queen Zelda of Bloom was seeking a true princess to become the bride of her son, Prince Derpert. This is my chance to get back to princessing, Paulina cried. She rummaged through her trunk of ex-princess stuff, brushed the wood shavings from her best ball gown, and blew away the bits of sawdust that clung to her diamond tiara. Then she tucked a piece of garlic into her bodice for good luck, snipped some fragrant herbs to cover up the smell of garlic, and headed for the castle. Paulina didn't expect much competition. There wasn't another princess for hundreds of miles. But when she got to the to Bloom Castle, Paulina found she was only one of 12 princesses hoping to become the royal bride. When she looked into her assigned room, Paulina saw her bed piled with 16 mattresses. Oh, for Pete's sake, the old princess and the pea trick. That's so once upon a time. Naturally, Paulina didn't sleep at all that night because she felt the lumpy pee through all of the mattresses. When the 12 princesses gathered in the throne room the next morning, the seven who looked bright-eyed were sent home. Now Paulina was Paulina and four other sleepy princesses remained. First, they were made to write essays entitled, Why I Want to have the gracious and exquisitely beautiful Queen Zelda for my mother-in-law. Prince Derpert and Queen Zelda finally appeared on the balcony. Queen Zelda did all the talking. Congratulations, ladies. You have written some lovely essays, which I will keep in my scrapbook and you have all passed the mattress test. But to make absolutely sure you are of royal blood, there is a second test. Only a true princess can wear these glass slippers. For Pete's sake, you ever heard of sneakers? Paulina asked. Queen Zelda gave Paulina a sharp look. Nobody said you have to hike in them, just try them on. After the royal page made his way around the room with the slippers, two big-footed princesses were sent home. Now Paulina and two others remained. One was followed around by seven strange little men, and the other had such a long braid dragging behind her. Paulina kept tripping over it. For Pete's sake, you never heard of scissors, Paulina cried. Queen Zelda glared at Paulina. You all have passed the second princess test. Your final task is to cook a feast that proves you worthy of being my dear Dupert's wife. This set, this set up a whale among the princesses, especially Paulina. For Pete's sake! You have no royal chef? Silence, said the queen. The table holds the makings for three fine feasts. 
Choose well, for the winner will become my Depert's bride. As Paulina started for the table, the long-haired princess tripped her, then loaded up with food. By the time Paulina got there, the seven strange little men had run off with everything but some flour, yeast, water, three overripe tomatoes, and a hunk of stale cheese. Hey, that's not fair. Queen Zelda, will you help me? No, said the queen, because you have a big mouth. A servant escorted Paulina to her room and locked the door. Hey, how can I cook without a bowl or spoons or pots? There was no reply. Paulina tried to make bread, kneading the flour, water, and yeast together. But it only stuck to the tray in a flattened mess. She squished the tomatoes over the dough to brighten, brighten it up. It looked awful. She sprinkled cheese gratings over the top. It was still a mess, and Paulina was exhausted. For Pete's sake, where is your fairy godmother when you need her? I'm going to take a nap. She reached under the pile of mattresses, pulled out the offending pea, and climbed into bed. She hadn't been sleeping. Long when, long when there was a knock at the door. Only 20 minutes left, called Queen Zelda. I don't smell any cooking. I'm not cooking, said Paulina. I'm napping. Then I'm going home. You're not going anywhere, said the queen. The losers will be beheaded. Paulina sat bolt upright. Beheaded? You didn't tell us that. I forgot, said the queen. Can I have a second chance? How about I try to spin straw into gold? Or maybe, or maybe, I could guess a weird little, I could guess a weird little man's name? No second chances, declared the queen. But that's not fair, Paulina cried. Who needs to be fair? I'm the queen. Paulina leaped out of bed and ran to the window but it was an unbelievably, unbelievably long drop to the ground. The meal was her only hope. She rushed the tray over to the fireplace, stirred the, uh, stirred the few remaining hot coals, then crushed her garlic and sprinkled it over the mess for good luck. Finally, Paulina tossed on the herb, herbs to cover up the garlic smell. Paulina paced back and forth, planning her escape. Perhaps she can make a deal with a long-haired princess to climb down her braid? She didn't notice that the, goop, the goopy dough had browned into a crust. The tomatoes were bubbling, the hard bits of cheese had melted down, and the fragrance of garlic and herbs filled the room. A page opened the door. Time's up. Paulina took a deep breath and carried her tray into the great dining room. The other princesses had made lovely feasts, especially the one who had the seven strange little men to help her. Prince Depert went right to Paulina's tray. It's not pretty, but it smells scrumptious. He helped himself to an unusually generous piece. What do you call this dish? Paulina shrugged. I don't know. It can't be an official entry in the contest if it doesn't have a name, said the queen. Oh, for Pete's sake, Paulina muttered. What's that? snapped the queen. Pete's what? Remembering the beheading threat, Paulina frantically tried to think of a name. It's pizza. Pizza? The queen took a big bite. Odd name, but it's tasty. The winner is 
Paulina's Pizza. You mean I won't get beheaded? I was only kidding about the beheading, said the queen. Then I was only kidding about wanting to marry the prin marry Prince de Pert. Who needs him? I have other plans. Will you leave your recipe? Asked the queen. No way, said Paulina. It's just become a family secret. She headed for the door. I liked you best, whined the queen, following close behind. Oh, for Pete's sake, muttered Paulina as she stomped across the drawbridge. Princess Paulina's Pizza Palace opened a few weeks later. It featured unusual carved furniture and 50 kinds of pizza. Every Thursday on the royal chef's night off, Queen Zelda and Prince de Pert came to Paulina's for popcorn pineapple pizza. They often stayed to play cards with Paulina's father. From then on, whenever Paulina drove her pizza delivery cart through the town, doing the princess wave, everybody waved back and ran after her, asking about the day's specials. Life was good. Paulina was grateful not to have Queen Zelda for a mother-in-law, but she still worried about one little thing. She worried about Queen Zelda as her stepmother. All right, I hope you guys all enjoyed that short story. We're gonna move on and just a reminder, if you guys need to go back at all and read over it, go ahead, pause it and you can read at your own speed. All right, now let's cover plot. Plot, events that make up a story. The plot consists of these elements. The beginning, it introduces the, set, introduces the setting and the main characters. The rising action, which is events leading to the climax. The climax is the peak of the story's major events. And the falling action is the end of the climax. And then to end our plot is the end or the resolution. So to identify a plot, we have to identify these elements. So when we're looking for the plot of a story, we need to be able to find the beginning, the rising actions, the events that happen during the rising act, right during the rising action, the climax, which is the very peak of the story, the falling action and the events that happen throughout the falling action, ending the climax, and then the end of the story. What is the final ending of the story? What is the story trying to tell us? How does the story end? And then if you look in this little bubble right here, we have beginning plus rising action plus climax plus falling action plus end equals the plot. So it's very important when we're trying to find the plot to remember these five elements. So why is the plot important to a story? The plot focuses attention on the major characters of the story. If you remember in the beginning, we covered major characters and minor characters. When we're thinking of the plot, the the plot is mainly focusing on the major characters and the events of the major characters throughout the story. The plot allows events to flow in an orderly manner. So if we think back to the five elements that we're looking for in a plot, it starts with the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the end. That all happens in an orderly manner, which makes sense which will, when we're, so when we're reading the story, it all flows in a way that makes sense to us. The plot tells all the major events of the story. And lastly, one of the most important elements of a story is the plot. Without a plot, our story wouldn't make any sense. And we have to remember that. So how do we identify a plot? 
To identify the plot, we have to identify these elements. The beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the end. When we're thinking of a plot, we can think of it like a roller coaster. It starts off slow and then it goes up to a peak and falls back down and comes to an end. The plot is kind of like a roller coaster. You see this picture I included here? This would be the falling action because it's coming, we're at the climax and we're coming down. The falling action, coming to the end of the story, the end of the plot. All right, now if you look on this slide, I have a plot diagram. So what we're gonna do with the plot diagram is in a couple slides, we're going to reread the princess and the pizza. But this time when we're reading the princess and the pizza, we are going to be completing a plot diagram. If we look at the plot diagram, it includes the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the end. Just like the last five elements we were talking about in the previous slide. And it kind of looks like a roller coaster, actually. It goes, starts off slow, goes up, and then falls back down. So I'm gonna give you guys two minutes, and I would like you guys to go and grab a pencil and a paper for our plot diagram. All right. Now you can pause the video and take a couple minutes to go grab your materials. All right, welcome back everyone. So now we should have our piece of paper and our pencil in front of us. So on this piece of paper, we are going to be drawing a plot diagram. Our plot diagram should look similar to the one on the screen in front of you. To we'll start off with a line on the bottom going up to the climax where the climax would be a line going a big line going down and then a final line at the end for the end now what you guys can do is draw in five boxes and label each box with the beginning rising action climax falling action and end Make sure that these words do not fill out, fill up your entire box because we are going to be writing details about the princess and the pizza inside these boxes. Where the rising action is and the falling action, you guys might want to make those boxes just a little bit bigger because we're going to have maybe more than one or two events that fill up the rising action and the falling action. So just make sure your plot diagram looks similar to the one I have right here. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to complete your plot diagram, but make sure not to write anything in it yet other than beginning, rising action, climax, falling action, and end. Because once I read The Princess and the Pizza for the second time, we are going to take the information that we've learned about plot today to fill in these boxes about the different elements of the story that complete the plot. All right, read aloud number two, The Princess and the Pizza. This time, everyone will be filling out the plot diagram as we read. So on the piece of paper that you have in front of you, we should have the plot diagram not filled out yet. And as I read, we're going to be filling out the plot diagram with different information we're learning about the beginning, the middle, and the end. And remember, feel free to pause the video throughout to have more time to read or look at the pictures. Take your time when completing the plot diagram. All right. So we should all be ready to begin to fill out our plot diagram. And I'm gonna be filling out my plot diagram as I read as well. So let's begin reading The Princess and the Pizza the second time 
looking for important information about the plot to fill out our plot diagram. Okay, The Princess and the Pizza by Mary Jane and Herm Ouch. Princess Paulina needed a job. Her father had given up his throne to become a wood carver and moved them to a humble shack in a neighboring kingdom. Since the king was still learning, his carvings didn't sell and Paulina's garden barely kept enough on the table. Paulina missed princessing. She missed walking the peacock in the royal garden, surveying the kingdom from the castle tower, and doing the princess wave and royal processions. Paulina tried walking a stray chicken around her shack, but it only pecked at, bare, at her bare toes. Surveying the kingdom from the shack's leaky, leaky roof made even more holes. She tried princess waving to the townspeople from her father's cart, but nobody bothered to wave back. They just thought she was swatting at flies. Okay, so from the information that we just read in these first three paragraphs, we should be filling in some information into our beginning box on our plot diagram. Just fill in some details, some information that you guys noticed about the beginning of the story, how the story's starting out. One day, a page rode past the shack, announcing that Queen Zelda of Bloom was seeking a true princess to become the bride of her son, Prince Dupert. This is my chance to get back to princessing, Paulina cried. She rummaged through her trunk of ex-princess stuff, brushed the wood shavings from her best ball gown, and blew away the, the bits of sawdust that clung to her diamond tiara. Then she tucked a piece of garlic into her bodice for good luck, snipped some fragrant herbs, to cover up the garlic smell and headed for the castle. Paulina didn't expect much competition. There wasn't another princess for hundreds of miles. But when she got to Bloom Castle, Paulina found that she was only one of the 12, one of 12 princesses hoping to become the royal bride. When she looked into her assigned room, Paulina saw her bed piled with 16 mattresses. Oh, for Pete's sake, the old princess in the pea trick. That's so once upon a time. Naturally, Paulina didn't sleep at all that night because she felt the lumpy pee through all of the mattresses. When the 12 princesses gathered in the throne room the next morning, the seven who looked bright-eyed were sent home. Now only Paulina and four other sleepy princesses remained. First, they were made to write essays entitled, Why I Want to Have the Gracious and Exquisitely Beautiful Queen Zelda for My Mother-in-Law. Again, take a moment to read through these um, past two pages if you guys need to. There are some important events that happened in these past two pages that would be good to fill in for our rising action. Okay. Prince Dupert and Queen Zelda finally appeared on the balcony. Queen Zelda did all the talking. Congratulations, ladies. You have written some lovely essays, which I will keep in my scrapbook, and you have all passed the mattress test. But to make absolutely sure you are royal blood, there is a second test. Only a true princess can wear these glass slippers. For Pete's sake, you never heard of sneakers? Paulina asked. Queen Zelda gave Paulina a sharp look. 
Nobody said you had to hike in them. Just try them on. After the royal page made his way around the room with the slippers, two big-footed princesses were sent home. Now only Paulina and, two, and the two others remained. One was followed around by seven strange little men, and the other had such a long braid dragging behind her, Paulina kept tripping over her. For Pete's sake, you never heard of scissors, Paulina cried. Queen Zelda glared at Paulina. You have all passed the second princess test. Your final task is to cook a feast that proves you worthy of being my dear to Pert's wife. This set up a wail among the princesses, especially Paulina. For Pete's sake, you have no royal chef? Silence, said the queen. The table holds the math, the makings for three fine feasts. Choose well, for the winner will become my dear to Pert's bride. As Paulina started for the table, the long-haired princess tripped her, then loaded up with food. By the time Paulina got there, the seven strange little men had run off with everything, but some flour, yeast, water, three overripe tomatoes, and a hunk of stale cheese. Hey, that's not fair. Queen Zelda, will you help me? No, said the queen, because you have a big mouth. A servant escorted Paulina to her room and locked the door. Hey, how can I cook without a bowl or spoons or pots? There was no reply. Paulina tried to make bread, kneading the flour, water, and yeast together. But it only stuck to the tray in a flattened mess. She squished the tomatoes over the dough to brighten it up. It looked awful. She sprinkled cheese gratings over the top. It was still a mess, and Paulina was exhausted. For Pete's sake, where's your fairy godmother when you need her? I'm going to take a nap. She reached under the pile of mattresses, pulled the offending pea, and climbed into her bed. She hadn't been sleeping long when there was a knock at the door. Only 20 minutes left, called Queen Zelda, and I don't smell anything cooking. I'm not cooking, said Paulina. I'm napping. Then I'm going home. You're not going anywhere, said the queen. The losers will be beheaded. Paulina sat bolt upright. Beheaded? You didn't tell us that. I forgot, said the queen. Can I have a second chance? How about I try to spin straw into gold? Or maybe I could guess a weird little man's name? No second chances, declared the queen. But that's not fair, Paulina cried. Who needs to be fair? I'm the queen. Okay. So by now we should have about half of our plot diagram filled out. Make sure to fill in the details that we are seeing about the beginning, rising action, and climax. Paulina leaped out of bed and ran to the window, but it was an unbelievably long drop to the ground. The meal was her only hope. She rushed the tray over to the fireplace, stirred up the few remaining hot coals, and then crushed her garlic and sprinkled it over the mess for good luck. Finally, Paulina tossed on the herb, herbs to cover up the smell of garlic. Paulina paced back and forth, planning her escape. Perhaps she could make a deal with the long-haired princess to climb down her braid. She didn't notice that the Goopy, the goopy dough had browned into a crust. The tomatoes were bubbling, the hard bits of cheese had melted, and the fragrance of garlic and herbs filled the room. A page opened the door. Time is up. Paulina took a deep breath and carried her tray into the great 
dining room. The other princesses had made lovely feast, especially the one who had the seven strange little men to help her. Prince to Pert went right to Paulina's tray. It's not pretty, but it smells scrumptious. He helped himself to an unusually generous piece. What do you call this dish? Paulina shrugged. I don't know. It can't be an official entry into the contest if it doesn't have a name, said the queen. Oh, for Pete's sake, Paulina muttered. What's that? snapped the queen. Pete's what? Remembering the beheading threat, Paulina frantically tried to think of a name. It's pizza. Pizza? The queen took a big bite. Odd name, but it's tasty. All right. So from the last page on these last couple pages and the pages before, we should have taken information for the falling act to fill in our falling action. Whatever details you guys think fit for the falling action or any of the other boxes, write it down. No answers are wrong. We were just trying to piece together information to come up with the plot. All right. So you mean I won't be beheaded? Or The winner is Paulina's Pizza. You mean I won't be beheaded? I was only kidding about the beheading, said the queen. Then I was only kidding about wanting to marry Prince de Pert. Who needs him? I have other plans. Will you leave your recipe, asked the queen. No way, said Paulina. It's just become the family secret. I liked you best, whined the queen, following close behind. Oh, for Pete's sake muttered Paulina as she stomped across the drawbridge. Princess Paulina's Pizza Palace opened a few weeks later. It featured unusual carved furniture and 50 kinds of pizza. Every Thursday on the Royal Chef's Night Off, Queen Zelda and Prince Tepur came to Paulina's for popcorn, pineapple, pizza. They often stayed to play cards with Paulina's father. From then on, whenever Paulina drove her pizza delivery cart through town doing the princess wave. Everybody waved back and ran after her, asking about the day's specials. Life was good. Paulina was grateful not to have Queen Zelda for a mother-in-law. But she still worried about one little thing. She worried about getting Queen Zelda as her stepmother. All right, class, let's take a couple minutes to complete our plot diagram, and then we are going to take some time to go over um, a completed plot diagram with some ideas that we should have had written down in our diagram for the beginning, rising action, climax, falling action, and the end. Remember, no answers are wrong. We're just trying, like I said before, we're just trying to piece together details that will help us figure out our plot. If you guys didn't have any of the information that I had written down, that's okay. Make sure to write it down into your plot diagram. Draw some extra boxes if you need. Just take your time. Let's begin going over the diagram. Okay, down here is the beginning, if you guys remember. The beginning started with Princess Paulina's dad giving up his throne and the princess wanted a job. As Paulina is looking for a job, the queen announces she is looking for a bride for her son. And Paulina is excited. So this second box right here is going to be our rising action. Paulina finds out that the queen is looking for a bride for her son, and she's excited. Second box, 
with more important events during our rising action is Paulina arrives at the castle to find out there are 11 other princesses. But Paulina makes it to the final three. It's another important detail that we could add in for one of, actually two of the events that happened during our rising action. Our climax is Paulina finds out if she does not win, she will be beheaded. So this part of the story was definitely the most, the area of the story that had the most climax, the area of the story that was the most worrisome for Paulina. She was frantic. She thought if she didn't win this competition, she was going to be beheaded. So she starts to kind of freak out a little bit. She's like, well, it looks like I'm gonna have to try a little bit harder. I have to win. So if you have something about, as your climax about Paulina finding out she's gonna be beheaded if she does not win, that's great. All right, falling action. Paulina frantically tries to create a meal that might win and even considers trying to escape. So after she finds out she might be beheaded if she doesn't win, she's frantically trying to create a meal that might win, and she even thinks about escaping. So maybe if I escape, I can just leave, forget about this all. Paulina brings her completed meal to the prince and queen. So if you remember right before the end of the story, Paulina brings her um, completed meal to the prince and the queen for her meal to be tasted by both of them and to see hopefully if she wins so she doesn't get beheaded. So we should have for your following action, a couple of these details maybe. You guys might have different details, that's totally fine but we should have something along the lines of these, the information written in these two boxes. Finally, our end. Paulina wins, she, but, and she decides she does not need the prince. She's like, nope, I don't need the prince. I got better things going on. She had created pizza. Paulina lives a good life with her new business. Princess Paulina's Pizza Palace. So the story ends with Paulina winning, Paulina leaving, not wanting to be with the prince, and she creates her own, her own um, pizza palace. And that's how the story ends. So we should have something in our last box about the ending, how Paulina wins, and how she creates her own pizza palace that is very, very popular in the kingdom. Okay, so everyone take some time to complete your plot diagram. If you didn't have some of the information I had, take a moment to write that down onto your sheet of paper. Um, write in some extra details if you need, it, need to. And I'll give you guys a couple minutes for that. And then we are going to move on to our last part of our lesson, which is a short video. Okay, so for the last part of our lesson, we are going to watch a short video called The Tortoise and the Hare. I'm sure you guys have heard this story before. Um, I just wanted to, instead of doing another read aloud, we could watch a video. And with the video, we are going to be filling out a story map. So throughout the story, Throughout the story video, we are going to be finding the title, the setting, the characters, the problem, the important events, and the resolution. So on that piece of paper that we have our plot diagram on, you guys can go ahead and flip that over, or if you have an index card, I want you to write the following. Once again, the title, 
setting, characters, problem, important events, and resolution. So when we're watching the video, I want you guys to be filling in information about each of these. So we're gonna be finding the title, which is pretty easy. It's listed right at the beginning of our uh, video. I want you guys to be looking for the setting. So looking for, thinking of when you're watching the video, thinking of when, when is the story taking place? Where is the story taking place? And try to answer those questions in your head. And once you figure out the setting, go ahead and write that down. Write down the characters that you notice throughout the video. Write down the problem. If there's one main problem throughout the video, we're gonna write that down. Write down the important events. Write down events that happen throughout the video that you think are important, that have a big influence on our plot. And then the resolution. How does the video end? A resolution is the end. What is a final conclusion of our video? What was the main purpose of our video? I want you guys to write down the resolution. And again, this is a story map, and we're going to be filling this in for the story video of the tortoise and the hare. All right, so I'm going to... Okay, so I'm gonna, going to begin the video. Um, you can turn the video up on your computer if you need to. Anything you guys need. And let's begin and be sure to fill in these, um, write down information for each of these throughout the video. Title, setting, characters, problem, important events, and resolution. Let's begin. <laughs> In a forest, all right. So, after watching that video, we should all have um, written down some information about the story and our story map regarding the setting, characters, problem, important events, and resolution. Let's move on to review our story map for our video that we just watched. Okay, so for our title, we should have the tortoise and the hare. The setting, which was stated at the beginning of the video, was the forest. Our characters in the plot were the rabbit, the other animals, and the turtle. Be sure to write these into your story map if you did not have all of these um, important details listed. And then we have the problem. It's a couple problems. One was the other animals did not like how the rabbit always showed off. The rabbit was always showing off and the other animals just didn't like that. And then the rabbit races others and thinks he is the fastest animal in the forest. And the turtle wants to race him. And the turtle says, you know what, I'm sick of the rabbit always thinking he's the fastest, always bragging, I'm going to race him. Our important events. The rabbit shows off and talks about how he is faster than every animal in the forest. This leads to the turtle challenging the rabbit to a race. The rabbit starts off by winning the race. He's winning, he's, in, he's way, way ahead of the turtle. The turtle doesn't give up. The rabbit takes a nap during the race. What happened when the rabbit took a nap during the race? Does anyone remember? Yep, the, the turtle got in front of the the rabbit and he was starting to win and the rabbit woke up and once the rabbit woke up it was too late. The resolution the ending is the turtle wins the race and the turtle teaches the rabbit 
a lesson. The lesson that he teaches the rabbit is to stop bragging to others all the time about himself and to stop racing others. So from that day on, the rabbit no longer bragged and the rabbit no longer raced others. So in our story map, let's make sure that we have some of these important details written down. Um, again, no answers are incorrect. Just go over these answers with a, you can go over these answers with an adult or take some time to pause the screen and read over them by yourself if you would like and fill in any information you might be missing into your story map. And we are at the end of our lesson. Today we learned the different elements that make up a plot and how we find the plot of a story. So if you guys remember way, way, way from the beginning of this lesson, we went over five different elements that make up the plot of a story, which were the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the end. Again, we can think of that like a roller coaster. It starts off slow and steady and goes up with the rising action. Climax is at the top, come down with the falling action and, and go straight off with the end. We also learned the importance of characters and the setting of, we learned the importance of characters and the setting of a story to help add to the plot. So when we are reading a story, we need to make sure we're paying close attention to the characters, close attention to the setting, because they help add to our plot. And then the, we also learned the importance of the plot to a story and how events from plot can help, can help the readers to better understand the story. So our plot is one of the most important things about our story. The plot helps us understand what's going on in the story. It has events leading up to certain conflicts falling down and leading to the end of our story. So the events that make up the plot help us readers to better understand the story. And the last thing we learned was how to complete a plot diagram and a story map. So with our plot diagrams, you guys now know how a plot diagram works and how a story map works. You could use both um, a plot diagram and a story map to find the plot for other stories that you guys like, other videos you may like, anything that you guys think might help you to pra practice more with your learning of the plot of a story. So that's it for today. You guys did a great job. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, go back and review anything if needed. And thank you guys. Bye.